Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget standard or modern decks. And this week we're taking a look at Red Green Werewolves in Modern. This is a red green aggro deck featuring the werewolves from both the original Innistrad block as well as from Shadows over Innistrad block. So taking a look at one of these werewolves, they have the typical werewolf mechanic, where on the front side you have a human werewolf, and at the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast last turn, you get to transform the human werewolf into a werewolf werewolf. And of course the flavor behind that is that if a player casts no spells, it must mean that it's night time, so then all the humans transform into werewolves. And then at the beginning of each upkeep, if a player casts two or more spells last turn, you have to transform the werewolf back into its human form. And of course the flavor there is that if a player casts two or more spells, it must mean that it's daytime, so then the werewolf transforms back into a human. Alright, now that we've discussed the flavor behind the werewolf mechanic, we can take a look at the entire deck list. So the only non-creature spell in the deck is a Lightning Bolt, the classic burn slash removal spell, 1 mana to deal 3 damage to target creature or player, then the rest of the main deck is all creatures. So we have 2 copies of Village Messenger, which is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one with haste, transforms into Moonrise Intruder, which is a 2-2 two, two with menace. Next up we have 4 copies of Wolf Bitten Captive, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one, with an activated ability for 2 mana to give the captive plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, but we can only use that ability once each turn. And then he transforms into Kralen Horde Killer, which is a 2-2 two, two, activated ability for 4 mana to give the killer plus 4 plus 4 until end of turn. Then we have 4 copies of a Reckless Wave, which is a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, but transforms into a 3-2. Next up we get to our 2 drops, where we have 4 copies of Duskwatch Recruiter, the good old card advantage machine, a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, activated ability for 3 mana to look at the top 3 cards of our library, and we can reveal a creature card and put it into our hand, and put the rest on the bottom, and transforms into Kralen Horde Howler, which is a 3-3 three -three that makes our creature spells cost 1 generic mana less to cast, so that's a great way to play out your creatures that you found with your recruiter on the cheap, Next up we have 4 copies of Mayor of Averbrook, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one, that gives other human creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, so that affects the human werewolf sides and transforms into Halpack Alpha, which affects the werewolf sides giving all werewolves and wolves we control plus 1 plus 1, and at the beginning of each end step we can make a 2-2 two, two wolf creature token, which of course also gets the plus 1 plus 1 bonus. Then we get to our 3 drops, where we have 2 copies of Spirit of the Hunt, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three wolf spirit with flash, and when the Spirit of the Hunt enters the battlefield we can give other wolf and werewolf creatures we control plus O plus 3 until end of turn, so that's a nice way to save them from burn spells or to make them survive combat. And the nice thing about playing a bunch of flash creatures in your werewolf deck is that you get to say go on your third or fourth turn and that will transform all your human werewolves into their werewolf sides and then on the opponent's turn you can still spend your mana usefully by flashing in a spirit of the hunt to make sure you keep progressing your board and then in the meantime all your werewolves have transformed making them a lot more powerful. And the same is true for activated abilities, like the one on the Wolf Bitten Captive, or the one on Duskwatch Recruiter. You can simply spend your mana activating these abilities, that way you don't have to play a spell, and that way your werewolves transform. Next up in the 3 drops we have 2 copies of Guy Reach Bandit, a 3 mana 3-2 three with haste, and transforms into Vildum Pack Alpha, which says whenever a werewolf enters the battlefield under your control, you may transform it, which is of course a very powerful effect since often we do want to transform our werewolves as soon as possible. Then we have 2 more flash creatures, Wolfier Avenger, a 3 mana 3-3 three three wolf warrior with flash, and for 2 mana we can regenerate Wolfier Avenger, which is also very useful against removal spells, or if we want to block larger creatures and keep the Avenger around. Next up we have 4 copies of Immerwolf, which is our lord in the deck, a 3 mana 2-2 two two with intimidate, so can be blocked except by artifacts, red creatures or green creatures, and each other creature that's a werewolf or wolf gets plus 1 plus 1, and non-human werewolves we control don't transform, so that means that we get to keep the werewolf side as long as Immerwolf is in play, even if the opponent casts two or more spells. And last but not least, we have four copies of Huntmaster of the Fells, a 4 mana 2-2, two -two, that when he enters the battlefield or transforms into Huntmaster of the Fells, creates a 2-2 two -two wolf token and also gains us two life, 
and transforms into Ravager of the Fells, and whenever he does transform into Ravager of the Fells, he deals 2 damage to target player and 2 damage to up to one creature that player controls, and Ravager of the Fells is a 4-4 with Trample. So once you play out Huntmaster of the Fells, there's a small mini game where you try to transform the Huntmaster of the Fells as many times as possible, because then you get to generate additional wolf tokens and get to deal additional damage with the Ravager of the Fells. Then taking a quick look at the mana base, we have 4 copies of Copper Line Gorge as a fast land that enters the battlefield untapped if it's one of our first 3 lands. Then we have a whole bunch of basic lands, 6 forests and 4 mountains. And of course you can't have a werewolf deck without at least one copy of Kessig Wolfrun, which is a land with an activated ability. You can pay X, a red and a green, tap the Wolfrun to give target creature plus X, plus O and trample until end of turn. So that's also a nice way to use your mana without having to play out a spell to transform your werewolves. And then we have two copies of Raging Ravine, which is also great, as it can turn into a 3-3 creature that when it attacks, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on it, so another way to spend your mana without having to cast a spell. Then we have three copies of Stomping Ground, and finally four copies of Unclaimed Territory, which is gonna name a werewolf in this deck, so that we can make mana of any color when casting werewolf spells. Small side note is that our Immerwolf, Wolf the Revenger and Spirit of the Hunt aren't actually werewolves, so Unclaimed Territory will not help there, unless you happen to name a wolf instead. Then quickly going over the sideboard, we have two copies of Ancient Grudge, which is pretty thematic in our deck, and is also just a great sideboard card dealing with artifacts. Then we have one copy of Kozilex Return to deal with Go Wide decks, and it might seem a little strange in our deck since it also kills most of our own creatures, but the idea there is since return is an instant, we can simply pass a turn, make most of our werewolves transform, and then some of our transformed werewolves will have more than two toughness, and then we can play Kozilex Return in the opponent's turn and use that as a nice effective sweeper. Then we have two copies of Full Moon's Rise, which is an enchantment giving our werewolves plus one plus O and trample, and we can also sacrifice the enchantment at any point to regenerate all werewolves we control, so that's a nice way to deal with sweeper effects from the opponent. Then we have two copies of Moonlight Hunt for when we need additional removal spells in our werewolf deck. We have two copies of Choke against the blue decks. We have one copy of Moonmist, which transforms all our humans and prevents all combat damage dealt this turn, which can be a nice surprise in some racing situations against other creature decks. We have two copies of Destructive Revelry to deal with artifacts and enchantments, and last but not least, three copies of Relic of Progenitus against graveyard decks. So that's the deck, and now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand is a little on the expensive side, but I think definitely a keep. We've got three lands, a nice curve, and uh, Huntmaster is always nice to have. So let's lead with Copperline Gorge, say go. A tapped Talaria West from the opponent, so this could be the mono blue living end deck. And unfortunately now we draw our wave, which is a turn too late. Uh, I think we still run out our mayor here, just to be mana efficient. And there's Simic Growth Chamber, so never mind, this could be an Amulet deck instead. So we do get to transform the Mayor, which is nice. And we picked up a Village Messenger, so now we have the option of uh, running out two one drops, but then we would transform the Alpha back into the Mayor, which we don't really want. So the thing to play here is to just run out an Immerwolf. So let's name Werewolf. Run out Immerwolf. And get in for four. And then we get to make a wolf token end of turn, which is going to get pumped by both our uh, alpha and the immer wolf. So that's going to be a 4 4. So we've got a nice fast clock going. Gemstone mine from the opponent. And a wayward sword tooth. So that's an interesting addition from Rivals of Ixalan. Kind of replaces Azusa for the opponent. Perhaps they run both. So here we can run out Village Messenger, which is going to be a 3-3, thanks to Immerwolf and Hellpack Alpha. And then we can put our opponent to 2. Could also run out Huntmaster of the Fells, but I feel like getting in the damage is more important than the additional board presence. And this way we also get to keep up Spirit of the Hunt, just in case. Alright, let's see if our opponent can uh, somehow run out a primeval titan this turn, but we are still at 20, so I'm doubtful that we can die here. 
And there's Azusa, so your opponent can play all the lands they want. And Relic of Progenitus, that's fine. And alright, so we got there. On to sideboarding against an amulet deck. Feels like we want the Revelries and the Ancient Grudge to deal with the amulet itself. Could be that's overboarding a bit and we don't want all of them. I don't think we need Choke since the opponent has very few actual islands. Could also bring in Moonlight Hunt to deal with the opponent's creatures, so that's also a consideration. I uh, don't think we need Moon Mist or Relic. Uh, perhaps we don't need the Revelries and we just rely on Ancient Grudge. So four cards coming in. I guess we can take out Village Messenger, which is typically the weakest card. And perhaps we can go down on Wolf Avengers. Try something like this. Alright, this hand's got a lot of Lightning Bolts. We actually prefer to draw more creatures in this matchup, but I think this is still a keep. We do get to lead with Captive into Mayor, and especially if our opponent doesn't have early plays and we get to transform them, that's pretty nice. So let's lead with the Captive. And just an Explore from the opponent, so they get to play an additional land. So they are ramping nicely. Alright, Unclaimed Territory, I think we just run out the forest here and smash for two thanks to the mayor. And next turn we have a few more options, we could maybe use the activated ability and then Lightning Bolt the opponent end of turn. That way we get to transform more werewolves. Or we can just run out another mayor and do the same thing a turn later to transform both mayors. Dismember to take out our mayor, that's fine. So I guess the plan is to run out another mayor here instead of uh, trying to transform the captive. So let's do that. Get to keep up Lightning Bolt for a potential Azusa. But otherwise, I think I will fire it off end of turn just to use our mana efficiently. Bojuka Bog, that's fine. Don't have a graveyard we care about. And Ancient Stirrings, alright, so that's scary since that can find an amulet. And next turn, our opponent could just hard cast a Primeval Titan, which I guess we could double Lightning Bolt. Opponent finds Engineered Explosives, alright, so... Back in the day, I think the transformed werewolves would have a converted mana cost of zero, but I think the rules have changed in the meantime. Opponent plays explosives on two, so they can blow up our mayor next turn. And end of turn, I think we will bolt our opponent. And Duskwatch Recruiter, which we don't want to play into the explosives. So I think we just run out the territory, name werewolf. And then we can use the captive and get in for five and I guess we can just double bolt our opponent here they could have interaction for single blue but I think we just go for it and all right that does it sweet managed to burn out the amulet deck onto the next one all right we're on the draw with a solid looking hand so we'll keep Hand would have been a bit better on the play, but still a keeper. Opponent with Volt Scourge, so we're up against Affinity. Alright, another wave. So we definitely want to run out the territory first, since that's going to use red mana to run out a red one drop, and then on turn two we can go a green one drop plus red one drop. And that wouldn't work if we run out forest plus captive here. So the question is do we want to run out the messenger or the wave? The messenger could attack into the Volt Scourge. And I don't think the opponent's going to trade. Um, but the wave, of course, is a bit bigger. Yeah, I think we do just run out the messenger here. Name Werewolf. Run out Village Messenger. Get in for one. So game one might be a little rough. But after sideboard, we do pick up some additional tools to fight affinity. Opponent does actually block interesting. Did not expect that, but I'm actually not too sad about that. Since if the opponent can make Scourge bigger with a Cranial Plating or uh, a Steel Overseer, then we could have been in trouble. Instead, just another Volt Scourge. 
and we draw into a captive. So we could run out Duskwatch Recruiter, but I think we just want to go with double one drop. Could go with double captive here, but again, I do want to use our red mana while we can. So I'm just going to go with one of each. And say go. So our opponent didn't have the fastest start ever. Let's see if they have a powerful three drop here. They're attacking for one. And yep, there's Atch Champion, which we're going to have a hard time attacking past. This turn, I think we just go two drop plus one drop. And then next turn, we can maybe use the recruiter's ability to transform all our werewolves without having to play a spell. So I think we do take two. Run out recruiter. And do we want to run out the captive or the waif? I think we just want to use our red mana here. So let's run out the waif. And say go. Blink Moth Nexus. Opponent's got two cards left in hand. One of them is Thoughtcast, so never mind. They've got three cards in hand. So Thoughtcast could mean that they're lighter on Galvanic Blasts, but they could still have both. Just Volt Scourge attacking for one. That's fine. And a Memnite. All right. Copper Line Gorge to draw. So yeah, here I think we just say go and then use a recruiter and we can use that in the opponent's turn as well and just before the recruiter would transform let's see if the opponent has an instant they want to play they don't and then use the recruiter before he becomes a werewolf all right we found a hunt master of the fells mayor of averbrook village messenger so i think we want to go with the hunt master here just as a most powerful card the mayor is a consideration but now that most of our creatures are werewolves I think uh, the Hunt Masters is going to be better. Alright, so now we've got a bunch of scary werewolves, but opponent being affinity, they can easily cast two spells in the same turn to transform them back. Another creature land from the opponent. They've got two cards in hand, so they both need to be spells if the opponent wants to transform more werewolves back. And the opponent just passes, interesting. So now that we picked up a land, we could actually run out two werewolves, both the Huntmaster and the Garage Bandit, thanks to the Howler, but then we would transform the werewolves back. So I don't think we want to do that quite yet. So don't have any great attacks because of this Ash Champion. So I think we just run out Huntmaster of the Fells here and uh, go from there. So we get a wolf, gain two. I guess a reason to run out an additional werewolf here is that we get to transform the Duskwatch Recruiter and maybe we can use the ability to find more werewolves. Since we can't really make any great attacks on the board. Alright, I guess I'm sold. So this will transform everything back. But then uh, we can start using the Recruiter once again. Put on drawing a lot of lands apparently. But if we can start transforming Huntmaster into the Ravager of the Fells, we can start taking out all the opponent's creatures one by one. Oof, Cranial Plating, that's scary. So the opponent can equip that onto the Ink Moth and uh, kill us in two turns, basically. Or maybe in one turn. Well, yep, that's just one turn. That's unfortunate. So opponent just infects us for 11 and we're dead. So yeah, that was a card we did not want to see. All right, so we did end up dying here to Affinity, but uh, things should improve after sideboard as we pick up Kozilek's Return, two Ravelries, uh, two copies of Ancient Grudge. I think we also want the Moonlight Hunts as additional removal, and we can also consider Moonmist. And what do we take out? Village Messenger is pretty poor. Wolfier Avenger seems pretty weak. Garage Bandit also doesn't seem great here. Let's see, Spirit of the Hunt could still be okay in combat. Perhaps we shave on some of our 1-drops. Perhaps take out a Captive and a Waif. Just because our 1-drops are uh, not going to be great in this matchup. Alright, this seems okay. Would like to be on the play. Alright, this seems fine. Got a Captive into Mayor. Got a Ravelry and then Huntmaster. Has a nice Curve Topper. Alright, let's lead with Captive. 
Sengu. It's very unlikely that the captive transforms against Affinity. As we see Memnite into Springleaf Drum. And a Volt Scourge. Alright. So here we have to decide which land to play, which is not trivial. I think we still go with the Forest here. And then run out the uh, Mayor. And attack for two. Signal Pest. Opponent can attack with both here since we're not blocking. And a Steel Overseer. Alright, that we definitely want to kill with our Revelry. So let's take two. Yeah, we have to kill this now, otherwise our opponent gets to use it. So we don't get to transform more werewolves, but that's fine. And let's attack for three. So this Huntmaster is going to have to do some heavy lifting, as Signal Pest plus Volt Scourge makes it difficult to race. And Master of Ethereum is also a problem. So we need another removal spell here. Ancient Grudge would be great. Instead Duskwatch Recruiter. Not quite. So we can't even attack here. And we might just die next turn if the opponent has any more relevant cards. But I think we do have to run out the Huntmaster here. Gain two, and say go. And then the plan is to try to transform the Huntmaster a bunch of times. Opponent with a conservative attack. So... Can't block anything, take 4, down to 7. And ideally they don't have anything to play here so we can transform Huntmaster. But that's unlikely. And another Steel Overseer, hmm. That's rough. But the opponent is out of cards. And we draw Forest, so hmm. Yeah, I don't like our chances here since even if Huntmaster transforms, we could deal 2 damage to the Overseer, but then the opponent can just tap it in response, make it a 3-3 so it doesn't die. And then the opponent's creatures just are too big. Like, we can't even kill any of the opponent's creatures since they can just overseer in response. And then uh, if we want to transform the Huntmaster, we can't actually play any spell this turn, so we can't run out the Recruiter. So yeah, we're in a bit of a pickle here. Can try to bluff attack, but that doesn't even help. I guess the plan is to transform Huntmaster and hope our opponent doesn't see that they can overseer in response. It's a bit desperate, but... Desperate times call for desperate measures. So let's say go. Well, our opponent did not activate Overseer in response, so that's a misstep from the opponent's part. So that might give us a glimmer of hope. So they can still fly over for quite a bit of damage here. But now if we do draw Ancient Grudge, we do have a shot. Opponent attacks with everyone. Let's see, this can become a 7-7, so I'm definitely blocking here. Question is if we want to put anything else in front of it as well. Don't think we do. So let's block. Opponent's got a Dispatch, so that just exiles our creature, that's fine. Still don't take any damage from the uh, Master of Ethereum. So we do fall to 3, so now we do need to draw into Ancient Grudge. I guess uh, Kozilek's Extra Turn would also do it. So let's draw. And just a Raging Ravine. Oh well. So it did not work out. If we attack with everyone, it's still only 11 damage. And there's no way our opponent doesn't attack next turn. Can we recruit her into anything? I guess we can try. Nope, there's our Moonlight Hunt, which would have been decent, although not game-winning. And uh, yeah, I guess we can attack with everyone. We could technically have a Lightning Bolt here, but that still doesn't kill our opponent. Yeah, they're just taking it. They fall to 7. And then we die 
to Volt Scourge and Signal Pest. And uh, we did have to rely on our opponent making a mistake to even get this far, but uh, this is definitely a tricky matchup since we don't have any flying creatures to block the opponent's stuff with, so perhaps we need even more Ancient Grudges in the sideboard to try and have a chance. So on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw here, and we have a difficult decision since we have a one lander with a bunch of one drops, but yeah, no second land. I think I'm gonna mulligan just because one land is a bit too risky. This is better. And do we scry land to the top if we see one? I guess we do. Instead a wolf bitten captive, I guess we can also keep on top since we are on the draw. So we get to lead with a one drop. Opponent with stomping ground. Untapped. And a faithless looting. Discarding prize amalgams, their opponents on dredge most likely. So they're trying to get some creatures back from the graveyard, so we kind of have to try and kill our opponent quickly before they can actually get their creatures back, because once they do it's gonna be difficult to actually win on the board. So I think we just lead with forest. That way we can still postpone our decision on the territory, whether to name wolf or werewolf. Hope our opponent can't play any spells turn two, since they did take quite a few mulligans, so they are low on cards. Opponent does have a play, just another looting. And they discard Narcomiba, which of course is not great to have in your hand. And a Neonate. And they run out of land for the turn, so no dredgers in the graveyard yet. But our opponent is fetching with the Mire, so they might have some plans for this Bloodstained Mire. And doesn't really surprise me to see dredge mulliganing a bunch, since they are looking for very specific cards in their opening hand. And Insulin Neonate for the turn. We untap, draw Stomping Ground. So here I think we just run out to Mayor. So we can go Territory, name Werewolf. Run out Mayor. And attack for two. And then next turn we can either play land, keep up Spirit of the Hunt, or we can run out uh, Recruiter. And play a tapped Stomping Ground. Could even consider using the activated ability, but that seems unlikely. Opponent takes it, falls to 13. So what is our opponent looking for? I guess a Bloodcast plus a land would be good for them. Or just a Dredger, and they did find a Life from the Loam to get back two lands. And they just run out a tapped Blood Crypt. So next turn they can start dredging to fuel their graveyard. And they can also flash back the Faithless looting. Reckless Wave the draw. Here we could attack with both. And if your opponent blocks to try and trade with the mayor, we can flash in the spirit. But then they can simply sacrifice a neonate, so that doesn't seem great. So I think the plan here is to just run out stomping ground, take two. And then only attack with the captive. Could also go recruiter plus wave here, which is also reasonable. And then we can try and transform next turn. Adding a lot more power and toughness to the board. Opponent does decide to block and sacrifice a neonate. And they can dredge the life from the loam with the draw from the neonate. Let's see if they do. Yep. And three lands go to the graveyard, so that's good for them for the life from the loam. But at least no amalgams or blood casts. That's good for us. Alright, so now we have to decide whether or not we want to try and transform the werewolves on board. Or if we want to run out the recruiter and the wave. I think we actually do want to run out more creatures here. And then next turn transforming all of these is gonna be a pretty big game. Another looting. And there we see two copies of Fly from the Loam go to the graveyard, but no other plays. Mountain the draw, so we could run out Huntmaster, but I think it's just more beneficial to transform all our werewolves. So, let's start by attacking. Opponents at 5. Turn out Mountain, say go. And then we can also keep up our Spirit of the Hunt in case our opponent has a Conflagrate to try and kill some of our creatures. So all the werewolves transform. Now our Spirit of the Hunt only costs 2 mana thanks to the Howler. I guess had we named Wolf with our territory, then... Uh, we could have also used the Captive's ability and still played the Spirit of the Hunt this turn, thanks to the Howler. But as is, we need the uh, green mana to play out the Spirit of the Hunt. 
opponent casts life from the loam after dredging and they did hit a blood cast so they can get that back as well as the amalgam but that's probably going to be too late for them so blood cast comes back which triggers the prized amalgam but that enters the battlefield tapped and blood cast can't block so i think our opponent's just dead here gets a mountain and a cathartic reunion opponent can dredge some more if they want to and they do hit an arc amoeba so that's a blocker Another prize amalgam. So our opponent gets an Archimiba, they get to put that in play. So an Archimiba will trigger the new amalgam as well, but uh, that's still not good enough. Alright, so we get to go to sideboarding against Dredge. So this is where we want our Relic of Progenitus. I don't think we need Kozilex for turn, even though it can clean up. And uh, Archimibas on Bloodcast for a turn. Don't think we want extra removal. Uh, Full Moon's Rise is a consideration, giving our creatures Trample is pretty nice against the recursive blockers from the opponent. And Moon Mist is also a consideration, as that can prevent damage for a turn and transform all our guys. So those are considerations, as well as the Full Moon's Rise, pretty good against a big Conflagrate from the opponent. A Lightning Bolt isn't great, since killing something from the opponents is not too relevant, but it is still a burn spell to try and finish off the opponent, of course. Village Messenger seems like the weakest one drop. I think I like the rest. Maybe we just cut all Lightning Bolts and just rely on uh, combat damage to get there. That could be wrong, but I think I want to try this configuration. Just more creatures, and since we are bringing in the Full Moon's Rise, uh, taking out a non-creature spell also makes sense. Alright, so we have a pretty interesting opening hand with our very powerful Hate card, but... Uh, a tap land, which is pretty awkward since we can't actually run out the relic on turn 1. And once we do run it out on turn 2, we can't even sacrifice it unless we draw into another land. So I think this is actually a mulligan. And it's also not like if we resolve a relic of progenitus, we automatically win the game since it's not the most powerful graveyard hate card ever. This hand looks like a keep. And mountain. I don't really want to draw too many more lands, but we do want a third one. So I guess we'll keep it on top and hope not to draw more lands after that. But I can see putting it on the bottom. Opponent kept a better hand this time, so they lead off with a Neonate turn 1. We're just gonna run out a Gorge, say go. So our opponent will get to do their thing, which is probably more powerful than our thing in most games. But they do have a fail rate, while our plan is gonna be a little more consistent, even though it's less powerful. Opponent gets in for one, we go to 19. Alright, our opponent just says go. So no early plays. And we draw into a captive, which had we scryed our land to the bottom, we could have played out on turn one. So that's unfortunate. But here I think we just run out the mayor using the mountain, since we can keep this to potentially name wolf for spirit of the hunt. Our opponent might have brought in some uh, removal spells, like... Uh, a lightning axe, perhaps even dark blast since that does kill the mayor, but seems overall pretty weak against werewolves. But you never know. Opponent does sacrifice a neonate end of turn, discarding bloodgast, and we're gonna fetch right away to put the bloodgast into play so they can attack with it next turn. And they get a steam vents, so that could mean that they have narcomibas that they want to cast or prize amalgams in hand, which I guess is a good sign for us. So just a blood cast from the opponent. And there's a blood crypt, so do we see a hard cast prize amalgam? Not yet, opponent gets in for two first. They probably should not have played their land yet, since if we do somehow end up blocking, then uh, they can't get their blood cast back this turn, but we're probably not gonna block here. And a hard cast Golgari Thug instead. So 1-1, one, one, and when it dies, the opponent has to put a creature from their graveyard on top, and that's not a May ability, so they actually have to do that if they have a creature. This does mean we don't get to attack with our mayor unless we want to run out the spirits or go for the Moon Mists. Tricky play. Few options here. You can just run out the Garage Bandits, hit for 3, which isn't bad, but then our opponent can block and start dredging, which we don't actually want them to. So I think the play is actually to just keep up the spirit of the hunt. So we can run out unclaimed territory, name wolf instead of werewolf, and say go. Try to transform the mayor. Could have also run out the captive and then tried to moon mist. 
but I think this is fine, since we can actually ambush a Bloodcast with our Spirit of the Hunt. Opponent attacks with both, interesting. We could actually block with the Alpha, and if the opponent then tries to finish off the Alpha, maybe the Spirit surprises the opponent. If it's a Conflagrate, that's probably enough damage to actually kill the Alpha, so maybe we want to Spirit of the Hunt instead to block the Bloodcast with. That seems reasonable. And again, I don't want to block the Golgari Thug, since I don't want to give the opponent a Dredger in the graveyard. I'm just gonna block with the Spirit on the Bloodcast. And I don't really care if the Spirit dies, although I would like to keep him around. Opponent does have a land to get the Bloodcast back, but they decide not to. Stomping Ground, do they get the Bloodcast back now? They still don't. So they want to keep that blood cast in the graveyard for some reason. Perhaps they have prized amalgams they want to discard. They're casting life from the loam, getting back a few lands. And casting cathartic reunion. Discarding prize amalgam. And there's a conflagrate I was afraid of. They won't get back the amalgam this turn. But they can next turn together with the blood cast. And then they have a conflagrate in the graveyard we need to keep in mind. Let's untap. Opponent did cast two spells, so our Halpak Alpha does transform back into the mayor, and we draw into a full moon's rise. So it is tempting to just smash for four with the bandit as well here. That deals a total of eight damage. But then the conflagrate is gonna be pretty devastating, killing the mayor and the bandit. I guess we can just run out the full moon's rise. And then get in for five. And if they try to kill the mayor, we can always choose to regenerate. It is a little bit of a nombo with our uh, Spirit of the Hunt, but we have more werewolves in hand, so that's fine. So Garage Bandit can come down as a 5 power trampling attacker with haste, so that's not too bad. So our opponent gets back Bloodcast, casts Life from the Loam just to get back one land, so they have mostly lands in hand at this point. I would normally keep track of all the lands our opponent has in hand, but it's a little difficult here. Opponent does attack with a thug. Pretty happy to see that. And our opponent is going for a conflagrate. Uh, one to the mayor, four to us. We could sacrifice a full moon's rise, but I think we actually let this happen. Since the mayor wasn't going to transform anytime soon unless we used moon mist. And uh, having Trample when the opponent has a bunch of Amalgams seems relevant. So we're at 11, opponent's empty-handed, just discarded a whole bunch of lands, and now has Amalgam and Bloodcast. So we do get to chunk the opponent, and Immerwolf is also not bad. Can run out Garage Bandit and Wolfbitten Captive. And I don't think we're dead on the way back. Yeah, let's uh, run out uh, Bandit. Attack for 7. And run out the captive. And next turn we can use Moon Mist as well to fog the opponent for a turn and to transform more werewolves, which is probably going to be enough for the win. Opponent dredges, mills over a Cathartic Reunion, Bloodcast, and a Life from the Loam. They're flashing back looting. They're probably looking for a Conflagrate, and they did find one but they're unable to cast Life from the Loam and Flashback Conflagrate this turn. Which is good for us. So they can Conflagrate for one, killing the captive. And the right, our opponent scoops it up, so next turn we were able to attack for enough Trample damage that the opponent would have died. And uh, Moon Mist would have been pretty sweet as well. And we were gonna draw Forest, so we could have actually uh, played out the Immerwolf and cast Moon Mist, transforming all our Werewolves and giving them plus one plus one. So that would have been more than enough for lethal. Alright, sweet. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel. And you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel. As well as getting us closer to our goals. Where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.